Hi, I'm Jean Sarnoski, and I'll be your host for another installment of Cape Cod Health News, the news service of Cape Cod Healthcare. Today's show will be all about neurosciences. We'll learn about the latest technology and techniques in brain, neck, and back surgery from our highly skilled neurosurgeons. Then we'll learn about some of the latest treatments for migraines, strokes, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, and Parkinson's from our excellent team of neurologists and clinicians. But first, meet Robert Wheeler, a patient of neurosurgeon Paul Houle, who was nearly sidelined with severe back and leg pain from a herniated disc. Hello, my name is Robert Wheeler. I just woke up one morning and I was in, uh, in pain. Uh, my left leg was uh, horrendous pain. It was probably up around a 9 or a 10 on the pain scale. So finally having some diagnostics, I found out that it was a herniated disc. Then I got a schedule uh, to see Dr. Houle and uh, made a schedule to uh, get it repaired. He talked to me about uh, what was going on and uh, what the procedure would be. Uh, they go in a little angle to your spine and uh, they put a, well there's a whole procedure. They put a wire in and then a tube over that and then they do all of the work through that tiny little hole they put in your back. So the Joymax procedure is actually called a transforaminal endoscopic surgery system or TSIS procedure and that's just too hard for people to remember or learn but it's simply a method of performing a lumbar discectomy or a thoracic discectomy. And the benefit of it is, is that it utilizes the spine's natural um, openings to access the disc space. It provides a faster recovery. Um, less pain postoperatively, and it's a very effective way of removing a herniated disc. So the ideal candidate is anybody who has a herniated disc that hasn't improved with our traditional conservative treatment, such as physical therapy and an epidural steroid injection. So anyone what we call a paramedian disc herniation, your garden variety one, or one that extends out of the spinal canal into something we, that we call an extraforaminal disc herniation, is someone uh, who is uh, a good candidate for this surgery. So the Joymax procedure um, utilizes the neuroforamen to access the spinal canal. And in doing so, we're able to enlarge it. So the surgery to take a disc out actually includes the foraminotomy or the enlargement of this natural opening. And when that natural opening is, is narrowed because of arthritis, um, we can go in there and enlarge it and take the pressure off of the nerve. So that's actually a fairly large population of patients that this surgery would benefit. Thank you again for the uh, job you did and it really helped me get my life back on track. And uh, I appreciate it. You can be a star. Oh boy. Patients who present with uh, spinal stenosis typically have back and leg pain when they walk and stand could be in both legs, could be in one leg. Patients who have a lumbar disc herniation typically have a shooting pain that's searing down one leg in a, in a specific distribution. Each nerve in the lumbar spine goes to a different part of your leg. So when a patient comes to our office and says they have pain in a particular distribution, just by talking to them, we typically know which nerve is compressed and then we can look at the MRI scan and correlate it with the pictures. So patients who have a minimally invasive laminectomy typically have a quicker recovery. They get back to doing the things they want to do sooner they have less pain, and there's less risk to the surgery. My name is Diane Wells, and I'm a nurse practitioner. My symptoms of low back pain with um, numbness and tingling in my legs came and went for about two to three years. I was seeing Dr. Brown and had successful injections until they stopped working, and that's when I saw Dr. Nakata. So what it is, it's a loosening of the spine where the vertebrae actually translate or slip. Some people just call it a slip and it becomes an issue when it starts to pinch the nerves and cause severe back pain. Then I went on vacation, came home, walked down my hall and fell, and I couldn't get up. For some people it's tolerable and we don't operate. He would not operate right away, which I did appreciate in the long run, but at first I just wanted relief. Neurosurgery is very tactile, it's very delicate tissue. I have a spinal fusion, plates and screws, and two laminectomies. Spinal fusion is our ability to give structure back to a spine that is weakened for any reason. The pain in my leg was gone. It was gone immediately. The neurosurgeons of Cape Cod are the place to go. But I did want to go to Boston to have the surgery done, but there's no need for that, and that I'm grateful for. 
The arm is basically an interoperative CAT scan. So it's a large donut that has uh, an opening on one side. It almost looks like a Pac-Man. So we can put a probe into the patient's spine and we can see it on a screen on a CAT scan image that's uh, recreated in three planes. So we can see exactly where we are in the spine in relation to the, um, the, the CT image that was completed. So we can place the screws with him as guidance. And then once the screws are in place, we repeat the CAT scan and confirm that where we thought the screws were placed is actually where they were placed. And that's accurate over 99% of the time. So the MOBI-C is the brand name for an artificial cervical disc. So cervical disc replacement. And it's a procedure that is replacing what we call an anterior cervical discectomy infusion. An anterior cervical discectomy infusion is a way of treating cervical disc disease or narrowing of the, of the holes where the nerves exit, so people who have pinched nerves in their neck. In the past, we would perform the anterior cervical discectomy, which we call an ACDF. The spine is meant to be a flexible unit, and whenever you stiffen the spine, the adjacent levels see extra stress. And as a result, they can degenerate at a much faster pace. And so, if they degenerate, they can produce symptoms that will, might require surgery. And in fact, about 20% of people who undergo an ACDF require surgery at an adjacent level at some point in their lives. Just like the evolution in orthopedic surgery for hips and knees, where we used to fuse hips and knees, now they moved on to replacing hips and knees. Spine is, is undergoing the same evolution, where instead of fusing a segment of the spine, we're replacing it. The surgery is done through the front of the neck, so I make a very small incision. So actually, if you feel your Adam's apple and you fall off to the side, you actually touch your spine. So there really isn't any muscle to cut other than a very thin one. So the surgery itself isn't that painful. The device has two pieces that are about the size of a quarter. And in between them is a little piece of plastic. It's a little ball. And so one part of the metal has a really rough surface that is almost like Velcro. So eventually the bone grows into it and that's what secures it to the bone. It has a little pocket in which the ball fits and that allows for motion so you can move your neck around. One of the advantages is that people are able to go back to work much more quickly after an arthroplasty than they would with a fusion because you're, you're meant to move. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Shannon and I'm a PA with Cape Cod Healthcare Neurosurgeons. Finding out you need surgery for your spine, neck, or brain can be scary. When you choose Cape Cod Healthcare for your neurosurgical care, you're in good hands. With more than a thousand types of neurological diseases, specialization is vital for correct diagnosis and treatment. You're retired now. Plenty of time to play another 18 holes today. And then, at Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care Centers, our board certified ER physicians are here for you with extended weekday and weekend hours that fit into your schedule. With four convenient locations across the Cape, there's one near you. And you'll probably be heading home within an hour. We'll work on those aches and pains, and you can work on more important things, like your game. Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care Centers. Hi, I'm Jennifer Miller. I'm a physician assistant at Cape Cod Healthcare Neurosurgery. Approximately eight out of 10 Americans will suffer from back pain during their lives. Sitting hunched over at your desk can put up to 200 pounds of pressure on your lumbar spine. Fortunately for residents of Cape Cod, the availability of minimally invasive surgery can relieve this pain. To find out more, visit us at capecodhealth.org neurosciences. My name is Charles Worley. Um, we live in Gray Gables. Uh, I'm a marine geologist. I work for the U.S. Geological Survey. My low back pain prevented me from d doing long duration standing, sitting, driving. The worst of the pain would not let me walk. I couldn't walk for a couple weeks. So I inquired with Cape Cod Healthcare uh, about a neurosurgeon to go see. They referred me to Dr. David Lepla. When I met Dr. Uh, Lepla uh, for the first visit, he went and looked over all my records, uh, my previous MRI examinations, had a long interview with Dr. Lepla. They were gonna go ahead and remove some bone to relieve the pressure on my nerves, exiting my spinal cord. I went to Cape Cod Hospital in the morning. Um, I was seen shortly thereafter and prepped for surgery. After the surgery, I, I noticed immediate relief of the original pain. I did not require as much pain medication as I thought. Uh, there wasn't a lot of surgical pain. I started physical therapy three weeks after surgery. 
I would recommend the neurosurgeons of Cape Cod, and I would definitely recommend Dr. Lepla. The real purpose of Osteocool is to provide pain relief to the patient and to kill those tumor cells that are involved in the um, disease segment. We are commonly refer these patients from the oncologists and they may or may not have undergone radiation treatment. Before the advent of Osteocool and the implementation of Osteocool, really the only treatment for that sort of pain would be steroids and radiation therapy. Osteocool is a new technique that's designed to treat patients who have tumors in the spine and the process is introducing a working cannula through a small incision into the vertebral segment that's involved with the cancer or the tumor and then we introduce a working probe uh, into the vertebral body itself and then we actually heat up the tip of the probe and it's being monitored continuously by a computer to maintain a certain uh, temperature threshold in order to destroy tumor cells. The advantage of Osteocool followed by a procedure called a kyphoplasty procedure is that it's almost instantaneous. I tell people it's like a light switch. It's on or it's off, it works or it doesn't. We all get headaches and headaches can oftentimes be a pretty vague symptom. Um, because we all get them and overwhelming majority of, of, of headaches that people encounter are benign. They come and they go. But when they come into my office and they have a headache, sometimes it means something very different. Uh, so we look for other symptoms, visual problems, you know, that could be double vision, that could be loss of a portion of the visual field, they're seeing black spots, tunnel vision. Oftentimes patients will have problems with balance and coordination, dexterity. You know, they lean to one side, they miss a step and they think they tripped. And you look a little bit more carefully and you probe a little bit more deeply, you find that it wasn't a misstep. They just don't have the coordination and the dexterity that they used to have. Some people may have gross weakness. They can't lift something up. Uh, other patients might present with hearing difficulties, swallowing difficulties. So the, the symptom spectrum can be quite broad uh, and it's our job to figure out and tease out what's important and what's more generic. I deal primarily with tumors affecting all parts of the brain, and most general neurosurgeons can do that. There are certain areas that require some more advanced training, in my opinion, to, um, uh, to access and to treat different disease entities that originate in those parts of the brain. Typically, the base of the brain, which sits right above the base of the skull, is one of those areas. And all the important blood vessels, all the important nerves, some of these really critical structures are right in the way and you find yourself navigating through these natural crevices in order to avoid those critical structures uh, and take out tumors, for example, in those locations. The more things you have in your armamentarium to treat these problems, um, I think the better it is for patients. The brain is a very complex organ and it's difficult to find a safe corridor to access it. So neuromonitoring is a way that we can electronically record from and stimulate the brain and help determine what is the safest corridor to access, say, a tumor or an AVM or vascular malformation. So it's a safe way to approach lesions through a very delicate structure with no obvious roadmap to it. Specifically, this is called cortical mapping. Cortical mapping is a form of brain mapping that allows you to, once again, you can stimulate the brain, take recordings from the extremities, but you can also record directly from the brain and determine where the very sensitive areas are. For example, the motor, primary motor cortex and the somatosensory cortex are areas that you cannot violate when you're taking something out. So whether a tumor is next to or below these areas, it's good to know what that relationship is. We use it now as a safety measure. We do it while people are awake. So once we've done the craniotomy and we're looking at the brain surface, we're trying to determine how we can access lesions that are near or beneath that surface. So this is different than spinal surgery in that it's much more refined. In spinal surgery, we use these recordings to determine our proximity to nerve structures. So anything that's delicate, the spinal cord, the nerves, we can detect how near or far we are to, from the instrumentation. Certainly if you're pinching a nerve, you'd want to know that while you are doing surgery. So it's a form of live feedback, it's continuous feedback, 
and unlike imaging which has to be done sporadically this is uh, it's seamless and it's it's real time so our online uh, MRI review is a way for patients who don't live on Cape who want to be treated by us it gives them the opportunity to have their MRI reviewed for free so the way it works is that you uh, come to our website and you click on the link and the software guides you through a sign-up process where you answer some simple questions about your condition and then it prompts you to insert the CD of your MRI or CAT scan into the computer and then the software takes over it uploads it to our server the server then sends an email to us to notify that you to notify us that you've sent us your MRI um, and it allows us to look at it and we can send you back um, what we think about your MRI, whether it's something that we could help with. So we see a fair number of patients from Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket, and oftentimes they'll either forget to bring their MRIs, um, or we send them back to get MRIs on the island, and rather than have them spend the 100 or $150 it costs to come here just to have me review their MRI, it's easier for everybody for them just to upload it, and I can give them an opinion, because I've already examined them, and we can come up with a treatment plan for them after I've reviewed their MRI. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Claire Strauss, physician assistant at Cape Cod Healthcare Neurosurgery. Dr. Paul Houle and physical therapist Katherine Hull are certified by the Titleist Performance Institute to teach golf instructors and healthcare professionals the biomechanics of the golf swing. As devoted golfers, their goal is to help other Cape golfers perform at a high level while staying healthy. Your little daredevil has a new trick to show you. And then, at Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care Centers, our board-certified ER physicians are here for you. They have all the expertise and diagnostic tools they need at every location. And they're available for extended hours every day, including weekends. With four convenient locations across the Cape, there's one near you. Chances are, we'll have your little evil Knievel on his way in less than an hour. Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care Centers. Hi, I'm Marion, Practice Manager at Neurologists of Cape Cod. According to the World Health Organization, migraines are the third most prevalent disease in the world. Chronic migraines can be very debilitating. Fortunately, for residents of Cape Cod, there are several new options to treat this disorder. To find out more, visit us at capecodhealth.org neurosciences. A lot of people have migraine. It's a very common disorder. In fact, it's probably more common than conditions that we think about a lot, even including diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis. So um, it's extremely common. It really comes down to whether patients truly present to a physician complaining of it. Uh, but um, about probably one in four households has somebody who's had a migraine. So it's quite a common disorder. The vast majority of people go through different stages when they're going through a migraine. They start off often in the first few hours, sometimes having symptoms like fatigue, um, having some food cravings. Then there can be neurological symptoms like visual phenomenon. Sometimes people describe seeing bright orbs in their vision, black spots, distorted vision. And then after that, they start to get uh, more of the pain component. Um, and that's usually a severe headache, often around the temples and frontal area, but it can go to the back of the head. And then during those headaches, they're really not able to go about normal activities. They can be quite disabling. Although we don't have a clear mechanism of how it works specifically with pain, it essentially blocks the, the, the pain pathways that go between nerve and muscle. It's given every 12 weeks by um, a neurologist. It's given to seven different areas of the head and neck, and it's usually a five minute procedure. They're very superficial injections that are given. They target the common areas of pain. So if somebody comes in with over half of their month in pain, then they're a chronic migrainer. And that type of patient responds very well to Botox. You have to have that significant number mm -hmm. to get the best response. I've been having migraine since maybe five, six years ago. Migraines are a very prevalent thing that we see in our practice. It affects a variety of ages of people. Men and women are both affected. They're a very debilitating illness and very difficult to treat. When I used to have a, a strong one all day, 
I, I can't work, I can't do anything. The SPG block is a type of nerve block that we recently have been doing here in our office. And the SPG treatment, I lie down on a table. Dr. Harrigan get two big cotton swabs and he, he dropped them on a kind of anesthesia and then he put both in my nose and I stayed there with that for 20 minutes. We're saving people trips to the emergency room. We're able to offer them a more acute, quick care that is much more appropriate for them instead of going and waiting for that care in the ER. Really, it's amazing. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Cindy, a scheduler at Neurologists of Cape Cod. Approximately 15,000 people are currently living with some form of dementia on the Cape and Islands. Cape Cod Healthcare and the Memory Care Center of Cape Cod are working to create an Alzheimer's disease dementia care guideline for all primary care providers on the Cape. You never know when you'll need medical attention, but at least you know where to go when you do. At Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care Centers, our board certified emergency room physicians have all the diagnostic tools they need to take care of you. We offer extended hours every day, including weekends, at each of our convenient locations. And we take most forms of insurance. Best of all, we'll have you in and out in less than an hour. Cape Cod Healthcare Urgent Care Centers. Hi, I'm Joanna, a medical assistant at Neurologists of Cape Cod. Stroke is the number one cause of disability in the U.S. and the fifth leading cause of death. Time is of the essence when dealing with stroke. Fortunately for the residents of Cape Cod, since 2005, Cape Cod Hospital and Falmouth Hospital have been named primary stroke centers by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. My name is Pat Birchie, and in 2013, my husband was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Where our patients and families need the most help is living with a neurodegenerative condition. In the beginning, I was just shocked and afraid and didn't know where to turn. And Dr. Horrigan was very, very helpful, um, very on the target, I felt, about asking us about our whole lifestyle, not just the disease. As the neurologist, our job is to diagnose the problem, to figure out what the issue is. So in some respects, making the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, that's probably the easy part. The harder part is living with it. The Memory Care Center is something that we've been building over the years. We are the medical neurology piece of care for folks with dementia and Alzheimer's. The needs of these patients change over time. And what we've realized is that some patients, if they've got family support, if they've got financial support, they're gonna do much better than those patients that don't have one or both. I know that Dr. Harrigan was looking at not just the Alzheimer's, but the depression that went along with it and the anxiety. <clears throat> and some of those things were lifelong issues, but, but got worse with Alzheimer's or came to the fore with Alzheimer's. And I just felt like we could get good answers here. I, I would say we, we get a lot of consultation requests um, from individuals with a family history of Alzheimer's disease or maybe they have a close friend that's been recently diagnosed with some type of memory disorder. I would advise people who are going through Alzheimer's, especially when the diagnosis is new, to tell as many people as they can to talk with their spouse or their parent, whoever has the disease, and try to take the frightening um, mystery and uh, stigma out of it and share the journey with more people. You'll get much more support. The person who has the disease will feel better and stop trying to hide it like it's something to be ashamed of. So I think everybody and the whole world will be better off if we realize how much Alzheimer's is around us and how much easier it is to, to cope with if more of the world is there supporting you. Stroke is very common here on Cape Cod. So Cape Cod Hospital is one of eight extra high-volume stroke centers by, by the Massachusetts Department of Health, which we're accredited to. We're an accredited stroke center. Cape Cod Hospital itself will see between 50 and 70 strokes and TIAs per month. And a TIA, or transit ischemic attack, is stroke-like symptoms which come on and resolve usually within several minutes. 
in terms of stroke treatments, we remain somewhat limited even in today's age of, of technology and knowing how to treat vascular disease. So there's one medication approved by the FDA since 1995 called Alteplase, which is commonly known as TPA. And TPA is only given to 8% of patients with stroke nationwide because there's multiple restrictions of who can receive it. There is a four and a half hour time window for patients to receive TPA. However, in patients over 80, it can only be given safely up to three hours after stroke symptom onset. One quarter of strokes are wake up strokes where patients wake up with symptoms. So those patients automatically um, would not be candidates for IV TPA. The good news is in recent years with some landmark studies in 2015, now there's a procedure that can be done called mechanical thrombectomy or intraarterial treatment. And similar to a cardiac catheterization, through access through blood vessels in the groin, a catheter can be thread up instead of stopping in the heart, going up to the brain, and it can remove a clot in the larger blood vessels on the outer surface of the brain. And that procedure, mechanical thrombectomy, can be done in some patients in up to 24 hours. So there's a larger pool of stroke patients who could be a candidate for that. Parkinson's is a degenerative disease of the nervous system. We don't know what causes it. It was first described in 1817 by a general practitioner over in England named James Parkinson. And he referred to it as a shaking palsy. And it basically has, it's a clinical diagnosis. And there are four aspects to it. The one that's most prominent is the tremor. Um, but about a third of the people never develop the tremor. They have the other three symptoms, and they include stiffness. Even the face becomes stiff. You get this what's called masked face, where you don't blink as much. Second thing is slowness of movement. And the third thing is difficulty walking. And the walking is a shuffling. We had no treatments till L-DOPA was discovered. And, but you had to use huge doses to get the effect, and it had a lot of side effects. After a while, people couldn't take this pill. Then in the early 70s, they were able to give a lower dose of L-DOPA if you could get, combine it with a thing called carbidopa, which blocked an enzyme. So you could give one-tenth the dose, get the beneficial effect without the side effects. So that, it's been a godsend, and it's still, all these years later, almost 40 years later, still the gold standard. That's the best treatment we have for Parkinson's. There is an inherent risk for everyone who is living to have seizures. So if it's, if it's an isolated seizure event, you may not have epilepsy. It may be a one-time event. And the common provoking events for seizures would be use of stimulant medications or drugs, uh, excessive alcohol use, or it can even be certain electrolyte abnormalities. In terms of epilepsy, epilepsy is diagnosed when someone has recurrent seizures without these provoking factors. So these, this can be then controlled with the use of medications uh, to make sure these discharges don't spread and they are in check, so then the patients do not end up having more seizures. One of the things we do through our clinic is do something called an ambulatory EEG. So that's a longer term recording. And then you pretty much, you can go home with that. And then they're continuously monitoring the brainwave activity for up to 72 hours. EMG is an electrical test that we do to test the health of the nerves, um, can tell us whether patients have in polyneuropathy or mononeuropathies can tell us about certain other diseases like motor neuron diseases or nerve root impingements, whether in the neck or in the low back level as well. So the test is two parts. The first part is called the nerve conduction studies, NCS, and that's the electrical part of the testing. And then there's the second part, which is called the EMG electromyography, that's the needle part of the testing. Both parts of the test have to come in hand in hand in order to make a diagnosis. The first part, what patients describe is zapping sensation. And a lot of patients, they don't complain of pain, they simply complain of just a little bit of shocks or a little bit of zap sensation. And then with the second part, there's a tiny needle that goes into some of the muscles. It can be like a little bit painful, not a lot. We're trying to pinpoint or map the injury and see if there's like any evidence of an active and ongoing injury in the nerve root levels or in the peripheral nerves. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jean Sarnoski, wishing you excellent health and excellent health care.